Hi there, it's my news, your monthly digest about iOS and Mac OS development. I'm Roman Mishenko, a software engineer at CleanMyMac. This year, WWDC is packed with updates. A lot of them were focused on Apple users, but what about developers? I think everybody has already discussed the new design with the liquid glass element. So how exactly can we implement it? Starting from the application icon. Apple created a special tool for designers, Icon Composer. It allows create glassy icons with a bunch of layers just by adding them into the project as images. You can also change a layer's properties like opacity, blend mode and fill type. Icon Composer also allows you to preview the icon on different operating systems and either dark or in light mode. To adapt the liquid glass, you'll just need to use a new effect for UI visual effect view or liquid glass material for NS visual effect view. If you are using SwiftUI, just apply the liquid glass modifier. And that's all you need to do to add the new material. But if you want more customization or to improve performance, I recommend looking into the glass effect container. Apart from design updates, Apple also introduced a bunch of functional updates for its operating systems. For macOS, they completely reworked the Spotlight. Now it provides much more functionality in the same compact UI. For starters, they merged it with Launchpad, thus simplifying the search for a specific application on your Mac. Next, Apple integrated actions from the shortcuts directly into the Spotlight. You can send messages, work with system applications, Finder, or even a third-party app that has adapted this interface. And finally, my favorite is a clipboard history. Now I can quickly switch between different copied contents without needing to switch between windows. For iPad users, Apple introduced a new windowing system. This feature allows you to manage windows however you want. One more highly requested feature that finally appeared on iPad is working with files. Now iPadOS looks very similar to macOS and even Apple jokes about this. Wow, more windows, a pointier pointer, and a menu bar? Who would have thought? Unfortunately, there is still no Xcode for developers on iPadOS. By the way, about the Xcode, there is a lot to talk about. For starters, Apple introduced a new way to play with your code inside the projects with a playground macro. It looks similar to already existing previews. You can explore and experiment with your code using playgrounds that you add directly to your Swift files. Xcode immediately shows the results of running the playgrounds in the canvas. I think it's a nice way to get to know your code. Starting with Xcode 26, Swift explicit modules will be a default for building all Swift targets. This means all dependencies must be explicitly declared, improving build speed and reliability. Projects using implicit model loading will need to update their build settings or dependencies to support explicit modules. Next, the huge update for string catalogs. Now it supports comments, where the local LLM automatically generates a comment about the context where the strings were used. This update aims to improve translations and help define what content goes into the placeholders. By the way, CFGen still doesn't support string catalogs. Yep, it's been two years since the original issue appeared in the SwiftGen repo and a year since the PR arose. One more exciting feature for Xcode 26 is expanded support for code generation models. Now you can link your ChatGPT account or any other model provider to work with them right in the Xcode. This feature reminds me of agent mode for Copilot extension or Cursor. We already tested this feature and we think it's a promising addition for boosting developer productivity, since you won't need to switch between different programs. The built-in support for documentation generation also worked nicely and, in our opinion, produces slightly better results than other services. In addition to new Xcode, Apple also has released Swift 6.2, packed with key improvements aimed at boosting performance and safety. Concurrency elements, a new concurrent attribute, default single-threaded execution, better diagnostics, 
all designed to make async await easier to adapt safely. Inline arrays and span type. Developers can now declare fixed size arrays for compile time optimizations and the new span type offer a safer alternative to unsafe buffer points. Broader interoperability. Swift ramps up support for C++, Objective-C and even introduced Swift Java integration, making it easier to embed Swift into diverse code bases. Containerization support. A fresh open source tool enables running Linux containers directly on macOS with Apple Silicon, ideal for cross-platform workflows. Apple introduced a major update to its AI strategy, the Foundation Models Framework, now available for developers. This new framework gives apps access to the same powerful model used in Apple Intelligence, supporting tasks like summarization, text generation, and tool-based interactions, all running entirely on device. This means no data leaves the user device eliminating the need for server inference and network dependency. Developers can integrate those capabilities with just a few lines of Swift code. What is interesting is that you can find all source code for those models, the parameters, etc. The model itself is called IFM Text V7, and it also has 56 transformer blocks. For comparison, Llama 3.2 has only 28 blocks. From the code, we can tell that Apple focused on low energy usage and creating task-specific adapters. Apart from those updates, Apple also introduced key improvements across its platforms. SwiftUI gains enhanced layout tools, smoother animations, and better performance. SwiftUI finally supports web APIs, 3D charts, rich text editing, and faster rendering. On the graphics side, Metal 4 brings advanced ray tracing, dynamic shaders, and tighter ML integration, boosting performance for games and pro apps alike. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and share your favorite feature from the WWDC. See you soon.